Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions where I break down the hottest and latest in 3D printing news each week so you can keep up with all the exciting developments. I know your time is valuable so let's dive right in. First up if you haven't heard the news, Anchormaker M5 3D printers are gone. Anchor is stopping production of these units which if we're being honest gives a pretty bad image for Anchor as they're trying to launch their new UV printer on Kickstarter. But don't worry, they've now rebranded their 3D printing name from Anchor Make to Eufy Make. So we will just forget all about all of this along with their old name, right? Unfortunately, this isn't the first run at Anchor disappointing its 3D printing community. When they originally launched the Kickstarter for the Anchor Make M5, they promised to come out with a multicolor printing kit, which ultimately failed to ever make it to market. But they did give a refund to people who backed it on Kickstarter. So by my count, that's at least two strikes against Anchor in their 3D printing ventures. So about ending production on the M5, Anchor hasn't officially made an announcement. They've just quietly stopped selling this 3D printer. And on their website, it's now listed as sold out. Looking at the responses on Reddit, this move has caught even loyal users off guard, especially those who invested early or expected continued support on their existing 3D printers. And of course, this also raises further questions about the Eufy Make UV Printer E1. With such a sketchy history, can people really trust Anchor with their money on a $2,500 UV printer? What do you think about this? Does anyone have Anchor Make 3D printers at home? Okay, next up is Saltgator. I never thought I'd see a desktop injection molding machine, but it's 2025 and here we are with the Saltgator. So this is a new consumer product making waves on Kickstarter. Saltgator is promoting what they call the first desktop soft gel injection molding machine. Now before you assume it's for making edibles, don't. Because despite the name, this machine is designed for molding small plastic or silicone parts like gaskets, fish lures, keycaps, and soft touch components. What's cool about this is you can 3D print your own custom molds for this machine with PLA, PETG, ASA, or other materials. They support a special low temperature injection molding so that the material on your molds won't melt. The device can mold parts anywhere from 80 degrees to 210 degrees Celsius. Now, if you've ever designed a part for injection molding, you know it's pretty complex with designing not just the part, but also the mold to consider draft angles, undercut surfaces, sinking of the part, warpage, etc. What's clever here is that using soft and flexible materials lets the users avoid a lot of these issues because the flexible material is pretty forgiving and in many cases will just come out of the mold even if it's not professionally designed. With a product like this, you really want to avoid the users having any negative experiences and you also want to avoid having to teach them a college level course on mold design. So with this approach, I think they've hit a sweet spot here. What's also interesting here is they showcase a couple of parts where this machine is molding a secondary surface onto other parts, like the soft tire molded onto the rim of a wheel for an RC car, and like the soft pads onto a custom keyboard key. So the process looks like this. The unit heats up in just 10 minutes, then you connect the machine to the mold, manually press in the material, and once it's pressed in there, you let it cool down for three minutes. After that, you open up the mold to see your newly formed creation. Also with this salt gator unit, they're claiming you can reuse your waste material. Throw it back in the unit, heat it up, mold it again, and you're off to the races. This Kickstarter still has 41 days left and they've completely blown past their goal of raising $15,000 and they're currently sitting at $234,000. The delivery dates of these units is expected to start in September just two months from now. This unit is also surprisingly affordable. For the earliest early bird special, you can pick it up for just $229. What do you think? Any cool projects at home you could use this Salt Gator DIY desktop molding machine for? Let me know down in the comments. And finally, a major policy shift for Thingiverse. Thingiverse has just announced that they will be using AI moderation to actively scan, flag, and remove gun-related 3D models from their platform. This comes after increasing scrutiny around weapon file sharing online. According to a recent Reddit thread, Thingiverse is now partnering with machine learning developers to build AI filters that can detect gun components even in partially named or disguised uploads. I'm not sure if this is a controversial topic, but I think it's a stupid use of 3D printing to try and make guns. 3D printing is not a technology for that. If you're into firearms, there's other safe and regulated ways to partake in it, 3D printing firearms are, in my opinion, just people trying to pass shoddy weapons into places where they shouldn't be. It's really a shame that people are trying to 3D print working guns to do harm to others. That's just not a noble use of 3D printing. Some people in the community like to make very obviously fake guns for cosplay, board game models, and other harmless activities. 
Hopefully this AI detection doesn't false flag models online and hamper the innocent people online just trying to have fun and be creative. So a quick update here from Thingiverse's website. So they are very concerned about falsely flagging models. So they will be using the AI program to flag models to be reviewed further, but then all models will have a further review by a human before a final decision is made. So it's great that Thingiverse cares and is showing the utmost support for their users. Okay, that's it for the main news topics. Let's head over and have a look at the Thingiverse print of the week. So lately, these couch cup holders have been all the rage online. So I went on Thingiverse and found a few models. And the first one I found here was the OG couch beverage holder back all the way from 2018. This might have been the first couch beverage holder on the market. And this one is created by Quantum 10. It is a very big size, if you can tell. You can fit just about any beverage in here except maybe a two liter of cola. One thing I did like about this model was it did split into two different parts that you could print out separately and then you would slot these together. One thing I didn't like though is this part was very hard to print. So I can separate it here. This part was no problem. Just print it straight upright like this. This part I was torn on. Um, I wanted to print it like this uh, flat on the bed so that the side walls and everything looks nice. But this bottom part here was a nightmare to clean out. Alternatively, I could have printed it upright like this, so this slot here would have been no issues, but the underside here where it needed support would have looked pretty crappy, so I decided to go this route. If I were to do a remix or redesign this, I think this slot could be fixed by instead of making this a straight T shape, um, at the top here we could do 45 degree angles up so that it could print this whole piece with no supports. Um, that would be a really nice improvement. But overall, once this is uh, assembled here, it does work really well, fits in the couch, and fits most any beverage that you want to put in there. So really good OG original idea. So then staying on the theme of couch beverage holders, we have the side cup holder here by Kick-Ass 3D Prints. So this part was printed all as one piece. I printed it flat on the print bed like this, which was a little better, but I did end up with a little bit not great looking surface under here where we need support. But printing it like this gave it a lot of strength, not going to have to worry too much about this breaking. And if you can tell, this size is quite a bit smaller. So this is meant for your average like cups or can of soda to fit into here. Okay, so let's test it out here. First, the OG giant uh, beverage holder. So here we've got just a regular can of soda. No problem, a little too big. Got a square water bottle that also fits. Have a giant can of beer. No problem. Now let's try out the side beverage holder. It does fit a can of soda, pretty snug. Square water bottle also fits. Giant can of beer, no go. Okay, that's it for 3D printing news this week. So what do you think? Is the Anchor Maker 3D printers done for good? Would you actually use desktop injection molding? And where do you land on the gun model crackdown? Necessary or overreach? Drop your thoughts down in the comments, and if you got any value from this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. As always, let me know if there's any 3D printing topics you'd like me to cover. Have a good week, happy printing, and we'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions. And a special thanks to my growing list of Patreon members who help support the channel. A new member this week is Mache Gregorchuk. Thank you so much for helping support the channel.